Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Such a pleasure to be able to speak to you today. Oh, you too. Um, you. Maybe we could just kick off with a brief introduction to this incredible new film. Um, I guess no spoilers, but what can audiences expect when they come and see Knock at the Cabin? What can they expect? Um, I think everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think uh, Knight wants his audience to be thrilled, to be excited, to feel a lot of fear, to feel love. I think he's asking some huge questions about truth and belief and um, the, uh, the end of the world, the state of the world. Um, but he is really making a film for his audience to have like the best time ever at the cinema. That's his obsession. And uh, that would be I, why I would go and watch the film. And of course, if anyone's at all familiar with M. Night Shyamalan's work, um, can always expect the unexpected. Yes. Um, Six Sense, the Village. Um, but when you first read that script, were you even taken aback? And, you know, was it what you expected? <laughs> yeah, I had so uh, I had auditioned for him, had a long meeting on Zoom with him. He called me three days later, which is really unusual for a director to call an actor directly, and said that he wanted to make me to be in the film. And then he said, you've got uh, 24 hours in which to activate a six hour link that will expire after six hours. And then I'd like you to make a decision. So that was the first time I'd read the script after he'd offered me the part. And I was so, it's the scariest thing I've, I think I've ever read. It was, so, it was so dark and so graphic and so daunting. And I was like, and particularly my part, I was like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to do so much acting. <laughs> <laughs> um, some pretty major, stu pretty major stuff happens and like this, yeah. Uh, I was definitely intimidated by it. And I was, yeah, scared reading it, scared making it. Um, still scared. <laughs> and did you have a particular film of his that you'd really loved or grown up watching? And because I feel like the DNA of lots of those films kind of feed into this as well. Yeah, you're so right. I, I um, this film really makes me think of Signs, which is a film of his I really love. In that, I think what he, uh, often his films are about a like in a, in a domestic setting with a family, but they're about these kind of like biblical themes or biblical proportions. And this film definitely does that. My favourite film of his, which again is about families in a specific setting and cabins, um, is The Village. That was my favourite film of his growing up. I like loved that film. I loved the world that he created and the twist. I, I was just so shocked at it when I was younger. Um, yeah, and it's so exciting to think you'll to be in one of his films. Mm. Like, you know, they're always controversial. They're always thought provoking. They're always kind of terrifying, and he's a he's a brand, you know. There aren't many directors that are. I don't know if he'd like me calling him a brand. <laughs> I'm just thinking, <laughs> but like, yeah, he's kind of prolific, and so it was it was exciting. It was really exciting. It's just like it's literally like getting on a runaway bullet train mm. and just like jumping on jumping on and being like, okay, I'm strapped in. Let's 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 do this. So yeah, it was cool. And it's interesting you mentioning there. You have to do so much acting. I mean, this. <laughs> such intensity yeah. watching it back. So I can't even imagine what it was like on set. And I think you were mentioning the screening yesterday, it was almost like doing theatre. Because, yeah. you know, you're in that kind of one space. I mean, didn't even have lighting inside, just you and the cameras. Yeah. Um, so what was the experience like for you? It was it was super intense. That's the only word I could describe it as, really. Luckily, we we had a lot of, a lot of fun as a cast and really got on. There was a lot of laughter because once we were in that cabin tied to a chair, like, it would just... Yeah, my heart would start racing. I would feel, I, f I felt a lot of fear making it. Obviously because I was playing fear and having to like play fear the whole time, but I did actually start to kind of feel it myself. I was like, oh God, the, just the stakes were so high. And and particularly Andrew is just super in denial of what is happening in that room and fighting for his, you know, he's fighting for his family's life. He thinks at several points that they're gonna, they're gonna lose their lives. And, um, you know, yeah, those 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 scenes where I'm like screaming for them not to touch my daughter and stuff. That they were like, yeah, they were really full on. It was full on to do. And the other thing I love about your character is we kind of peel off the layers as as the film goes on, and you know, there's glimpses of his backstory. Mm. And so, did you yourself, preparing to play him, kind of think a lot about you know where he might have come from, and so that when those layers peel off, you know, we can see more and more of the character come through. Yeah, I did. He he's. Oh, yeah, I think the fact that he'd suffered homophobic attacks really played into his outlook on the world and um, and also that he's a human rights lawyer. It's really interesting. He's the most cynical person in the in the room. He's kind of the most vulnerable, I think, because he doesn't believe in anything. Everyone else in the room believes in something. Andrew doesn't. And even though he 
is a human rights lawyer. I think he, human rights lawyer. I think he's also seen such atrocities that he he isn't even sure if the world should continue. You know, he says at the end of the film, "I don't believe in them," and he means really, I don't believe in humanity. I don't know if we should be making this choice. And um, yeah, it was it was interesting to play the cynic, the cynic in the room. Uh, yeah, and it's just such a it's such an <laughs> such an ordeal for him from from start to finish for all of them really. There's no one in there that's having a relaxing time. <laughs> um, but it was it was a it was a really interesting like really interesting journey to go on. And in terms of what people can take away from watching it, I mean, I think uh, Nikki said something really interesting yesterday about how M Night kind of makes us face our mortality. Mm. And you know, whether you read it as about specifically about climate change or just, I mean, things can feel a bit apocalyptic the way the world is going right now. And you know, is there some kind of um, you know release that we have from watching a film like this, and kind of like watching our worst fears play out? Yeah, I think it's in our like. I think it's. I think he's playing into our worst societal fears like collectively and I think you're right I think it's something that's playing on our mind as something that's part of a conversation the climate crisis and what's around the corner and sh do we have more of a shared collective responsibility to st responsibility to stop those things and in a world where actually we I think we're becoming kind of more segregated in what we believe in and it's very hard to find out what the real the truth is um, yeah, I think he's kind of making you think about he's ultimately making you think making you think about what the rest of humanity means to you I think at the end of the end of the film so it's uh, it's provocative as his films always are um, but that's I think what he loves and you've done such an array of things so far you know from Pennyworth to Fleabag to this um, what's been some of the highlights for you and what have you got next I um, I do you know what? I love Pennyworth I just it's such a fun show I love the people on it I love making it I love being up at Warner Brothers studio I love playing that character he's super dramatic um, uh, so I love that and uh, after this I'm not quite sure what I'm doing next but in the UK a film I did uh, a couple of years back called Spoiler Alert is going to be released and that's a that's a relationship film um, The Chronicle was a gay couple from them meeting in 2001 through to 2014 and it's just this really interesting um, yeah film about a relationship. And do you feel like, you know, the fact that like uh, a gay relationship is put front and centre in this film is kind of, I don't know, does it show that we've kind of had a shift, the needle's shifted slightly in representation in terms of film, or do you think we've still got a way to go? I think we've, we, we've got a way to go with all representation, I think. You know, we're an incredibly d diverse world, and I think it, there's a real power in representation, you know, uh, to learn about other communities, marginalised communities, for communities to learn about themselves. Um, I really believe in it as a... As a as, as a good thing, but um, yeah, it's really it's really um, refreshing, liberating. I feel really proud to be kind of riding that wave of progress, and also that this film centres a, a you know a gay couple, um, but the film isn't about that. It's um, it's it normalises who they are, and uh, Knight was really determined just to treat them as this loving family, which is exactly what they are in the film. They're just this family that are in love with each other, and I think it's. Um, as it should be, that is completely relatable and universal. Fantastic, I'm out of time, but thank you so much for thank sharing you. all that with us. Can't wait for everyone else to thank see this Thank you so film. much. <laughs>